Told wisdom verses of the middle way, and then homage to Gautama, who moved by his compassion towards Sagratama to read us of all distorted views. So today is the last day of our teaching this time. And uh, mainly we are going to do the bodhicitta ceremony As uh, I've said before, dharma is for, or religion or spirituality is for achieving happiness. So according to Buddhism, this uh, suffering is rooted in our minds, which is unruly mind, and then the happiness also um, should be rooted in our mind. And when we talk about living healthy, we take care of our physical health. And accordingly, we need to <clears throat> know how to keep healthy, hygienic, and so forth. And therefore, we need to know the factors which give us good health. And then similarly, it is the case with the mind. With, uh, with, because we have this human intelligence, human mind with this in special intelligence, we actually cause, uh, have a lot of thought processes going on which bring us happiness or unhappiness. And therefore, it is very important to know the working uh, or the system of mind itself. Animals, of course, may not have the same kind of power of thinking that we as humans have. And so it's a matter of whether we pay attention to this or not, that we can achieve our goal or not. And so to know the mind is very important. The, the health or hygiene of mind is very important. Hygiene of emotion. So with regard to Buddhism, <coughs> Um, Maitreya Buddha has said that uh, the bodhicitta is the factor which averts our lower realms of existence, both in the lower realms of existence. <clears throat> so the rebirth into the lower realms of existence is the result of harming others, causing harm and uh, pain to others. And therefore, by restraining ourselves, and we create the causes for high, higher rebirth, rebirth in the higher realms of existence. And therefore, by practicing bodhicitta, this altruistic spirit of enlightenment, by studying it and then reflecting on it, and then also integrating this principle within oneself. Of course, there is a level of practice where you think, oh, if I harm others, I would actually suffer. I would go into the lower realms of existence, and therefore you restrained um, those of the negative actions. Whereas in the practice of bodhisattvas, the reason that you use is not that you will go to uh, hell, but then because if you harm um, um, others, they are uh, pains. They, um, you create pain, give pain to others, and therefore you restrain harming others because they, uh, uh, you don't want to harm others more than thinking of uh, your or the consequences that you would face. And so the bodhisattva's intention to restrain uh, the negative actions is um, because the sentient beings suffer. Whereas in the disciples' um, tradition, uh, you avoid negative actions because you don't want to um, uh, be um, reborn into lower realms of existence, and also the, uh, their focus is to overcome the negative, uh, the, um, those of the uh, disturbing uh, emotions uh, to reach nirvana, whereas bodhisattvas 
uh, their aim is to attain the highest goal of uh, Buddhahood for the benefit of all sentient beings. And so all the practices that are taught in the sutras, Mahayana sutras, are for uh, the practice of bodhicitta and uh, serving others. And so here again, uh, with regards to the practice of uh, the uh, bodhicitta, you actually use your wisdom, realizing that reality, the, the nature of things, and then this wisdom, understanding reality, um, must help you to um, uh, develop love, uh, loving kindness, compassion, and then that in turn brings up uh, called, uh, in you uh, that of the extraordinary resolve to uh, take the responsibility of helping others out of suffering on your shoulder, and then you develop bodhicitta. And so uh, this is how the, uh, the practice of bodhisattvas go, uh, you go about with the practice of bodhisattvas. And uh, bodhisattva charya avatara in bodhisattva avatara the um, uh, uh, Shandi Deva says so uh, um, if you are not able to exchange your peace or joy and happiness with the suffering of others, live alone attaining Buddhahood, enlightenment, uh, even in uh, Buddhahood, even in this cycle of existence, in existence you will not have happiness. And uh, the, uh, because of our self-cherishing attitude, this extreme self-cherishing attitude, you are let into the lower realms of existence and all the different misfortunes, um, the bad things that are unfortunate things that are happening to us in our um, human um, society and communities is because of this self-cherishing attitude. And therefore, bodhicitta, this altruistic spirit of enlightenment, and you need to, uh, with regard to this, you need to think how this brings about the temporary as well as the ultimate lasting goal of happiness. Even an atheist who may criticize religion, and if they uh, actually develop and, and have a warm heart, they will have happiness. And therefore, it's very important. And uh, therefore, uh, the, uh, in Bodhisattva Chara Avatara, Shantideva says, the Buddhas, having pondered what is the uh, cause for um, uh, happiness, of the temporary and the lasting happiness for sentient beings, and having thought about that, they uh, actually found that Bodhicitta is the factor. Um, they, they have seen or found that this bodhicitta is the factor for that goal. And so, Jerembuche also says bodhicitta is the, uh, the yardstick of Mahayana. <laughs> and so forth in his ex uh, songs of experience. So when you think about bodhicitta, <clears throat> it's something that actually gives you a sense of wonder and amazement. If you really think seriously about it, of course, this happens. How good and that if I and have this kind of experience of bodhicitta and so forth. And therefore, you should first gain understanding of what bodhicitta is. And on a daily basis, give thought to it over and over again. And uh, the, from your ex own experience, you'll find that if you are, have a good heart, warm heart towards others, you will have good um, uh, health as well. And you will be, you have peace of mind that in turn helps you to have good physical health as well. So we want, we all want uh, friends. And with money or power and uh, uh, fame, I mean, it's, this is not going to uh, come in. So if you have a good heart, warm heart, then you will have good friends. If you disregard and, in fact, forget about others' well-being or welfare and, in fact, go on to exploit others, then how can you have good friends? So it's very important to have a good heart, warm heart. First, let's have tea. So 
So His Holiness was uh, quoting from Master Tsongkhapa's Song of Experience, where it says generating the mind is the that bodhicitta is the central axis, axles uh, of the supreme vehicle uh, path. It's the foundation and support of all expansive deeds to all instances of two accumulations. Uh, it is like the elixir of gold. Uh, it's the treasury of merits containing myriad collections of virtues. Recognizing these truths of heroic bodhisattvas uphold the precious supreme mind as the heart of their practice. I, a yogi, have practiced in this manner. You, who aspire to liberation, too, should do likewise. So, regarding bodhicitta, this altruistic spirit of enlightenment, which is actually complemented by wisdom, mainly wisdom realizing the uh, view of emptiness. So, by and therefore, it's very important for us to, in order to be able to develop these principles, to attain a, a human uh, life. So without this human life, it's very difficult on you know, animal body, in animal body and so forth. Uh, they may be able to do s to a certain degree, but this infinite altruism cannot be developed on, an, um, called, uh, on other uh, physical basis. And therefore, Master Nagarjuna in his Ratnavadi, Precious Garland says, first, um, uh, we should uh, uh, try to attain higher rebirth and then um, uh, go do the practices to attain the highest uh, definitive goodness, liberation. And therefore, having been born as human beings and uh, having met with the teaching of the Buddha and uh, to be able to <coughs> differentiate between uh, the, what brings about the ultimate goal of uh, uh, the liberation and so forth, you need to study them. So, of course, it's not um, easy to attain Buddhahood right away in one lifetime, but from uh, uh, following the teaching, practicing it for, for, from life, I mean, for life after life, I mean, um, you may be ultimately able to reach that goal. Although we may talk about bodhicitta and this um, altruistic um, um, uh, thought or spirit of enlightenment and its uh, greatness and uh, great qualities and so forth but in order to develop it we need to take the uh, path step by step and then familiarize our mind with the practices over li many lifetimes and therefore we need to think about, uh, we need to create the complete conditions for higher rebirth in this life <coughs> through our practice. And therefore, it is <coughs> in the Ratnavali, there is mention of the, uh, practicing the um, ten virtuous actions and then not harming others, not drinking uh, alcohol and uh, giving, um, um, practicing giving with respect and then also venerating and, um, those who are objects of veneration and so forth. <coughs> And so um, you should also avoid the um, uh, wrong livelihood. And if you um, avoid uh, harming others, and of course, people with others will also be uh, good and uh, like you. And so Master Nagarjuna emphasizes uh, not harming others, not using harsh language and so forth, and also not indulging in wrong livelihood. And so, of course, you should show mindfulness and introspection. And so if you take alcohol, you'll not be able to be mindful and also uh, be, uh, you'll not be able to watch your mind as well. And therefore, he um, 
um, uh, see, mentions uh, avoiding alcohol. And then when you give some uh, charity to others, you should not actually look down upon the person to whom you are giving something, but as it is said in the eight verses, eight verses of mind training, wherever, whenever I associate with others, may I look upon myself as the lowliest of all and uh, regard others the highest. And, and so you should be respectful to others. And so in this way, there are these 16 um, factors for a higher rebirth that are mentioned in Ratnavali. And then also you should have some understanding of the Four Noble Truths and their 16 characteristics or aspects. And you should know the, the, uh, that it is possible, the possible you should uh, understand the possibility of um, developing the path, the, uh, the true path leading to true cessation within your mind. And then thing also of overcoming the negative emotions and you know you should therefore understand um, what true cessation is how it's brought about within your mind and so forth i need this little bit higher So 400 verses mentions that first we should avoid non-meritorious actions and in, in the middle get rid of the notion of self and then in the in end <clears throat> overcome the um, distorted views completely. And so through these practices um, for higher rebirth, then you will have this intelligence or the wisdom which is able to differentiate between what is right from wrong. And uh, then um, uh, have developed this wisdom of selflessness. And then the third line says, in the end, uh, uh, get rid of all distorted views, which means that with <clears throat> you should develop this wisdom which can uh, eliminate with the help of bodhicitta and, and to, uh, so that you are able to, with this wisdom, uh, you are able to ov uh, overcome or eliminate <clears throat> all um, Cognitive obscurations, obscuration to full knowledge of everything as it, uh, it is. And therefore, in the highest yoga tantra, there is this mention, of course, of the subtlest clear light mind, which is used, I mean, which is, uh, uh, becomes manifest uh, after the three visions of uh, whitish appearance and uh, uh, through to the blackish near attainment uh, see, uh, dissolves. And that mind, the subtlest clear light mind, is used in tantric practice to uh, um, develop this wisdom realizing emptiness. Or this, this mind is uh, developed into that wisdom. And so this is the reference to uh, the, uh, that of the, uh, the third line saying, in the end, um, eliminate or overcome all uh, the um, views. And so on a daily basis, you should remind yourself of these different practices. And you sh as uh, Jetson Kappa says, you should uh, drive your mind towards that. So then, uh, and develop love, compassion, and on a daily basis, try to develop it further and further, make progress in your experience of love, compassion, and so forth. So if uh, right from the beginning of your day, when you wake up, if you really uh, think about it, give thoughts to this over and over again, you will be happy. I and mean, look at this self-cherishing attitude. What does it do to us? Even the slightest provocation I mean, uh, gives you unhappiness. And so right from the uh, beginning of the day, if you become unhappy, the, your whole day will be ruined. You'll be unhappy. And uh, 
because and um, if you if we take the example of a bad dream for example if you had a bad dream and when you wake up your mind is rather disturbed you'll not be happy and so uh, this good heart and warm heart is the root or the source of all our happiness and so peace of mind also is rooted I mean peace in the world also is rooted in this and in family and on family level also uh, peace in family is rooted in this if you ask a doctor a medical doctor whether anger will uh, be uh, good for your health and uh, and had to have a peaceful and relaxed mind or a warm heart will give that. Of course, the doctors will tell you to uh, take them um, to relax, but uh, that uh, while you physically may be relaxing on a bed, physically, but uh, then if your mind is um, going uh, everywhere, I mean, disturbed completely, you will not uh, have relaxation. And so what actually disturbs our mind must be known. And so this bodhicitta coupled by or com, um, complemented by the wisdom of emptiness is the source for one's um, benefits in this life, in the future, and uh, ultimately, I mean, in so if, uh, temporarily as well as in, um, um, uh, the, in the in sense of the lasting goal, bodhicitta coupled by that uh, wisdom is the source of happiness. And so if you are able to... <clears throat> so how do you make this life a worthy uh, human life is by developing a, a well, uh, this warm heart, uh, and using uh, your intelligence, try to understand <clears throat> that it's possible to attain omniscient mind of a Buddha. And therefore, you should, by, and by gaining conviction in it, you should also develop this uh, aspiration to reach, uh, to attain Buddhahood for the benefit of all sentient beings. So this is the purpose of, I mean, what I'm trying to give you is uh, the purpose of uh, bodhicitta. <coughs> and so bodhicitta and the um, wisdom of emptiness, of course, is something that is taught in uh, Buddhism. Although uh, the warm heart and love, compassion, and so forth are taught in all the religious traditions, Christianity, Hinduism, Islam, Judaism, so forth, and so the theistic religions um, actually uh, say that God is infinite love. And so all religious traditions have the same message of uh, uh, developing a good heart. So even with regard to animals, if you are kind to them, I mean, they also trust you. Even birds do that. Birds appreciate your kindness. In Austria or somewhere, there is a public garden. So the um, visitors to that garden actually take the uh, a handful of uh, seeds in their uh, hands and uh, feed to feed the birds and then birds actually come uh, on their hand land on their hands you can imagine did you ma so did i mention that <coughs> The mosquitoes, it's quite doubtful that mosquitoes can appreciate our kindness. Other than that, other animals like birds and so forth can appreciate our kindness. And therefore, kind heart um, is something that is appreciated by everyone, not only um, um, human beings, all uh, living beings or animals and so forth. So I used sometimes tell this story <clears throat> that when I was young in Nobelinka there were some uh, birds in cages and there was a uh, parrot. So if you put your finger into the ca cage the, uh, the parrot will actually bite and uh, you'll be injured and uh, bleeding will happen. 
would happen, but someone who was teaching me um, the calligraphy used uh, uh, named Kendra Denzin um, used to feed this uh, parrot with nuts. And slowly, when as Kendra Denzin, my teacher, um, was coming to Nobelinka, the birds actually could detect his footsteps and actually uh, intuitively know that Kendra Tenzin was coming and he, the birds got really excited. And then when after feeding the bird, this uh, parrot with the uh, the uh, nuts, then Kendra Tenzin actually patted its head with his finger and the, uh, the parrot felt really uh, good and responded very positively. And so when I saw this happening with Kendra Tenzin, and I also wanted the, the, the same reaction and I tried, started feeding it with um, um, nuts and it took the nuts but have, didn't have the same expression. And then I got uh, angry and hit it with a stick on its head. And then the le next days when I came around, it would just make noise. <laughs> I mean, uh, cry. And so even the animals appreciate your kindness if you are kind to them. So whether you are a believer or non-believer or even atheist, you, they may not. They may say that. Uh, who may say that? I mean, the, uh, called theism or the creation of the universe by God is something nonsense. But love or kindness is something that they uh, could appreciate. So everyone gathered here should think of living a good life, a positive wholesome life. So we may request um, lamas and uh, teachers for a uh, good life in the next uh, rebirth and so that we are uh, also safe from the lower realms of existence. But of course, it depends on you. It's on you in your hands whether you go to the next in the next life, go to lower realms of existence, or to uh, whether you attain higher rebirth in the next life or not. It's in your hands. So if you are kind and loving towards others, you would create those conditions for higher rebirth. So of course we pray to the Buddhas, Bodhisattvas, and so the objects of refuge, but although they are full of love and compassion, they're full of compassion, I mean, they cannot do much. So the Buddha himself has said, you are your own master. And also the Buddha has said, the sages do not wash away the sins of sentient beings, nor do they wash, uh, remove their suffering with their hands, nor do they uh, transpose their own um, um, uh, uh, realizations, but by teaching the truth, uh, they lead sentient beings to the, on the path of liberation. And so, so we need to th uh, weigh the pros and cons of self-cherishing attitude. If you remain self, uh, selfish, rather uh, indulging in self-cherishing attitude, you will, be, you will remain um, rather lonely. And then there will be lots of misfortunes, unfortunate things happening to you. And whatever profession you are uh, involved in, if you use your profession to actually help others as much as you can, it'll be helpful to you to have a good life, a happy life for yourself as well. And so on a daily basis, if we could uh, reflect on and um, call, uh, uh, contemplate a good uh, heart, kind heart, uh, this is how we should, uh, what we should do. And so, for a bodhicitta ceremony, um, imagine or, or visualize the Buddha in person, surrounded by the bodhisattvas. And then to these objects of refuge, we think of making offering or um, um, uh, 
are doing their seven limb practice, making prostration and uh, making offerings. And then confess, confession. Um, the rejoicing in the good deeds of others and then requesting the Buddhas to turn the wheel of Dharma and not to pass away as well and then dedicating these merits. So through this seven limb you actually create merit and also do purification practice. And And also you should um, imagine your own master and make this pledge to um, cultivate bodhicitta, this altruistic spirit of enlightenment. And when you have some lama from whom you take the bodhisattva uh, bodhicitta or in front of whom you uh, generate bodhicitta and you'll be reminded of this occasion and uh, to, to actually keep up with your uh, practice of uh, cultivating bodhicitta and also it helps to uh, make your practice stable. And so now we'll go through this um, the uh, ceremony for generating mind of, uh, for enlightenment. So in front of you, imagine the Buddha Shakyamuni who um, appeared uh, in, uh, in the world 2,500 years ago. So imagine Buddha Shakyamuni in person, not as just as a statue here, but uh, if, although you see the statue behind me, so of course there are the, found, uh, the, the different religious traditions of the world, Christianity and so forth, which uh, all of them teach the practice of love and compassion, to be kind to others and so forth, and then the practice of patience or tolerance is taught, forgiveness is taught, and self, um, contentment and self-discipline. <laughs> So the Buddha was someone who showed us the path to um, uh, enlightenment by teaching us the practices which would bring us temporary goals of happiness and joy in while we are in samsara and then ultimately their goal through the practice of uh, that of the um, cultivation of the wisdom of emptiness. So the Buddha is someone who I usually, when I give statues of the Buddha to people, I usually describe him, of course, as Buddhist. We consider him as, as our teacher, the founder. And uh, on top of that, he was someone who was a great thinker. And then um, well, so he taught many uh, philosophical um, I, uh, theories and different philosophies and then he was also a scientist because he said that um, the, his followers not um, uh, his disciples should not believe in what he has taught them but to do a critical analysis into his teaching and then when they find the truth of that through their analysis and also find them uh, useful and beneficial when they apply the teaching to them and they should then uh, believe in him and not just take the uh, teaching on the basis of faith alone and so by use by using critical analysis um, and then when they when the uh, uh, disciples find it beneficial when they apply the teaching themselves and they should accept it and not out of mere devotion or faith and so someone who lived 2600 years ago um, that Buddha was an ancient Indian scientist, I usually also call, tell this to people. And then we, we should also understand that the Buddha was someone who ha attained, who is essentially um, um, has attained the full four Buddha bodies. Uh, not unlike so some uh, philosophical schools within Buddhism also uh, who say that uh, the, after the, um, passing away there's nothing left of the Buddha. Even uh, today um, the Buddha is still um, uh, there. 
So there was uh, once in Bodh Gaya a uh, Ladakhi uh, monk. In his dream, he saw the Buddha, a very young age, uh, and uh, touching uh, his head as well as his friends in his dream. So in Tibet also there were people who had visions of the Buddha and uh, uh, actually heard the words of the Buddha. So these uh, accounts, perhaps amongst them, there may be some uh, which are lies, but we cannot say all of them are lies. So with regard to the uh, this, uh, lines of the Dalai Lama, um, the, uh, the first Dalai Lama had visions of many deities. And then the second, second Dalai Lama Gendun Gyatso also um, and, uh, and had visions of um, many uh, Buddhas and enlightened beings. As soon as he, um, I mean, uh, uh, when he closed his eyes, I mean, he had these visions. And then the fifth Dalai Lama also was somebody who had visions of deities, and then the thirteenth Dalai Lama as well had visions of deities and so forth. So of the fourteen Dalai Lamas, and all the fourteen Dalai Lamas, it's only me who d uh, has no such visions. But it doesn't matter. <laughs> But I have an, actually uh, lots of uh, friends who look up to me, although I don't have visions of deities. Wherever I go, I meet with people who actually smile at me. So if I have the visions of human beings, I could actually share my own experience with them and in this way perhaps uh, help others as well. So I prefer the visions of having the visions of hu human beings rather than the gods. And, uh, because I could actually help them. We could also um, uh, crack jokes amongst ourselves. So this is, uh, these are practical things that we can engage in. So even if you may have some vision of a deity, uh, it's quite doubtful that you could re receive any kind of uh, spiritual feat as such. Something solid. If, there, if this, that, that this is possible, then uh, we have done lots of rituals, prayers and so forth for uh, some kind of a blessing from the deities. And also we had done uh, certain uh, yantra practices as well, but we have not been able to accomplish anything but lost our country. <laughs> So, of course, these visions can happen, visions of deities uh, can happen to people. In Sanskrit tradition, there is mention of the four Buddha bodies. But in the Pali tradition, the Buddha in the beginning was an ordinary being, and then he went through the practice of austerity, and then at the end, uh, to, uh, and he became uh, a Buddha, a fully enlightened being. So in the Sanskrit tradition, there are these four Buddha bodies mentioned, as it is mentioned in Abhisamaya Alankara by Maitreya, uh, the um, nature um, body, nature third body, and uh, then there is the, wis uh, the uh, wisdom body, and then the Sambhogakaya, which arises and which uh, um, the, the wisdom uh, truth body from which the Buddhas arise in the form of uh, the physical dimension, which is the Sambhogakaya, 
And this Sambhogakaya form of Buddha arises from this Dharmakaya, the wisdom Dharmakaya, while the Buddha is still absorbed in, empty, uh, absorbed in his meditation on emptiness fully, he still, without wavering from that, he is able to appear in this physical dimension of Sambhoga Kaya, and from which arises there the Nirmana Kaya form as well, emanates Nirmana Kaya form of a Buddha, and therefore, the, it is possible to have the uh, visions of the Buddha himself, who is the uh, embodiment of these four Buddha bodies. <laughs> so even today, many different um, Dharma friends from different countries uh, are able to have visions of deities and uh, Buddhas and so forth. There, uh, it may be few, but it's happening. So, just imagine that the Buddha who lived 2,600 years ago is here with us in person, in the space before us. And then also imagine um, the great successors to the Buddha, such as the Mahakashapa, who from through whom the monastic ordination was passed uh, down to um, the present time to us. And then also imagine the great the great masters of India, such as uh, in in, uh, in Tibet, we used to uh, have the uh, two six ornaments, and we used to consider the six ornaments and two sublime masters of India, who actually. Um, uh, called, uh, worked and to disseminate the teaching of the Buddha and then on top of them uh, we can actually uh, also include uh, masters like uh, Buddha Palita, uh, Chandrakirti, Bhav Viveka, uh, um, Vimukti Sena, Hari Bhadra, um, Chandrakshita and uh, uh, those of the uh, Atisha and so forth. So these masters, including these masters, um, uh, nine more on top of the previous eight, and we, I have actually uh, written a praise to them, the 16 Nalanda uh, Panditas. And so you should imagine these Nalanda masters are also uh, around the Buddha and the successors. And also the, there were masters of Tantra, such as Saraha and so forth, who were responsible for um, uh, passing down the specialized teaching of the Buddha the tantric uh, teachings, which were specially, specifically tailored for individuals and um, beings uh, according to their dispositions and so forth. And so you should imagine those of the Mahasiddhas of India and then the masters who uh, like Chandrakshita and also Guru Padma Sambhava and so forth, from whom um, the, I mean, uh, with whom those that of the Nyingma school of um, uh, Buddhism started in Tibet, and then also those of the masters uh, the, of the new translation school of Sarma, such as the Kadam masters and uh, then uh, like um, uh, Atisha and so forth, and then those of the Kajip masters, and Sakya masters, so Kajip masters like Marpa, Lotawa and so forth, and then the Sakya masters, the Sakya Pratyaks, and uh, Master Adisha and so forth from the Kadam tradition, and then the Sakya patriarchs, such as uh, Sachin Kunga Gelsen, Sachin Kunga Nyingpo, and then Sachin Sach Pandita Kunga Gelsen, and so forth. The five patriarchs, in other words, and the lineage of the Sakya tradition. So within the Sakya, there are um, sub schools like Sakya, Ngorpa, and Tsarpa. 
and, and then also uh, in the Nyingma tradition, the Kama and Tema traditions, so the masters of these uh, lineages, and then the master Tsongkhapa with his eight principal disciples, uh, including those of the uh, two uh, principal disciples, and uh, the masters uh, in that lineage. So imagine all the masters of these different uh, Buddhist lineages uh, that spread in Tibet as well. Of course, we consider the 16 Arahats, elders, uh, were uh, actually uh, uh, said to have uh, become the custodian of the teaching of the Buddha. So the Buddha trusted and trusted the teaching in their hands. But we don't have any writings of these 16 Arahats uh, elders as such, except for one verse, which is the uh, verse uh, which is praised to the mother of all the Buddhas, the perfection of wisdom, which is um, beyond uh, words and so forth, written by Rahula. So in other words, imagine the Buddha the 16, the, uh, the um, or seven successors to the Buddha and all the masters of India, as well as the 16 elders, India and Tibet, as well as the 16 elders. So imagine all of these um, great masters, the Buddha and the uh, lineage masters of India, Tibet and so forth. Not only thinking that all oh, Buddha was great just because it is, uh, it is mentioned in the scriptures, but use your critical faculty to understand the greatness of the Buddha and so forth. So at this time, while you have attained a human body, a human life, and also met with the teaching of the Buddha, you should understand that the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas either have reached the goal of Buddhahood, or are going to reach, or are in the process of reaching that goal of Buddhahood through the practice of the bodhicitta, all the Buddhas of the, pre uh, the past, present and future uh, become enlightened, fully enlightened on the basis of this principle of this altruistic spirit of enlightenment. So this is their main practice and this is complemented also by the wisdom realizing emptiness. So uh, p keeping them as witness, taking them as your witness, you should make this pledge that you, uh, you will also, I mean, you should also think that you will um, do your best to cultivate this principle or the uh, altruistic intention to become a Buddha for the benefit of all, but, uh, all sentient beings. This is the seven limb practice. We are just reciting this one verse. Whatever slight virtue I have accumulated through prostration, uh, prostration offering, confession, rejoicing, requesting, and supplicating the Buddhas, um, I dedicate all these for full enlightenment. So this is said three times. So for the actual ceremony of Bodhicitta, there is a ritual mentioned in the uh, morality chapter of Bodhisattva Bhumi by Asanga, which is very extensive. And then there's also the 20 verses uh, in uh, Ratnavali, so that also would be very good to use for uh, cultivating bodhicitta. And I do this practice. And then there is also verses from uh, Bodhisattva Charya Avatara. Uh, two verses. So 
but we usually, um, for simplicity, use this uh, verse for generating mind for enlightenment. So your, motiva your motivation is to liberate all sentient beings from suffering its, its cause, together with its causes. You take refuge to the Buddhas who actually went through the path and become enlightened, have become enlightened or who are in the process of uh, becoming enlightened or who will enlighten, become enlightened in the future. From their own experience, they teach others. And so, on the, on the, uh, in, in terms of the practice, there is the method such as the practice of morality and so forth. And then there is also the means, which is the realization of emptiness directly. And then those are the six perfections, other perfections as well, which are um, complemented by the, that of bodhicitta. So you say you take refuge in the Buddha Dharma and Sangha until you reach the heart of enlightenment um, with a wish to free all sentient beings. And then the next verse says, enthused by wisdom and compassion, diligently for the sake of sentient beings in the presence of the Buddha, I generate the mind for full awakening. So diligently, for the sake of sentient beings, in the presence of the Buddhas, uh, I generate the mind for full awakening, uh, means bodhicitta. So we'll use this verse. So please uh, kneel on your right knee or crouch. If you have bad knees or bad legs, then you may keep seated. <laughs> Otherwise, kneel on your right knee. <laughs> the Islands is talking to Gaden uh, Tisur Rinpoche, the former Gaden Tiva Rinpoche, uh, that he's able to kneel on here right knee, and it's as if boasting to his Holiness, showing off to his Holiness that he has good knees. <laughs> So there are the practice precepts for um, not causing decline to bodhicitta in this life and in the future lives. And so on a daily basis, after uh, after generating bodhicitta here through this ceremony, you should uh, uh, go through this process um, uh, on a daily basis, two, three, I mean, or uh, however many times you wish to. So until your death, you should pledge not to harm others. And you should actually think of helping others. So think of re uh, uh, leading all sentient beings to the ultimate goal of enlightenment. So everyone. We'll use this text with a wish for, please repeat, with the wish to free all sentient beings, I shall always go for refuge to all Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha until I reach the heart of enlightenment, enthused by wisdom and compassion, diligently for the sake of sentient beings in the presence of the Buddhas, I generate the mind for full awakening. With the wish to free all sentient beings, I shall go, always go for refuge to the Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha or until I reach the heart of enlightenment. Enthused by wisdom and compassion, diligently for the sake of sentient beings, I, in the presence of the Buddha, I shall generate the mind for full awakening. With a wish to free all sentient beings, I shall always go for refuge to the Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha until I reach the heart of enlightenment. Enthused by wisdom and compassion, diligently for the sake of sentient beings, in the presence of the Buddha, I generate the mind for full awakening.
So those of you who know Tibetan, please say this. Today my life has borne fruit. I have attained an excellent human existence. Today I am born into the human Buddha's family and now I am I become a Buddha's child. Now come what may, I shall act in accord with this lineage, never causing this impeccable noble lineage to be tarnished. May the sublime jewel bodhicitta arise in those who have not yet yet, and where it has taken root, may it never decline but increase ever further. This is the verse, verses from Master Nagarjuna's. So may I always be an object of enjoyment for all sentient beings, according to their wish and without interference, as are the earth, water, fire, wind, herbs, and wild forests. May sentient beings as be as be dear to me as my own life, and may they be dearer to me than myself. May their ill deeds bear fruit upon me, and may all their fruit, uh, virtues bear, all my virtues bear fruit upon them. As long as any sentient being uh, anywhere has not been liberated, may I remain in the world for the sake of that being, even after attaining highest enlightenment. So with this, we have uh, done the ceremony for bodhicitta, and go over this on a daily basis and then I thought I might also do the seventh chapter of Buddha Palita but we don't have time and so we will uh, continue this teaching in the next year uh, from chapter 7 so all of us instinctively have this wish to have happiness and uh, avoid suffering and so to reduce suffering, we need to use our mind itself. So to develop the antidote, which the main antidote is this bodhicitta, which holds others more important, uh, cherish others over oneself alone. And so think that you will be a good person so bodhicitta is my also my own uh, my main practice as well as the uh, wisdom realizing emptiness and so through these two practices as i explained before cher self cherishing attitude is countered by cherishing others over oneself which is done by bodhicitta and then also the our misfortunes and so forth also happen because of grasping at some true independent existence in things and self so i can't say i have a genuine true experience of these two uh, bodhicitta and wisdom realizing emptiness but to a certain degree i could say i have some kind of a, sim uh, a simulated experience of them <laughs> so as it is uh, prayed to work for uh, the flourishing of the dharma, I mean, this is also what I pray for, that so just as you have generated bodhicitta to make progress and develop in, uh, it further and further, not only leaving it as at uh, the level of prayer, but use this same text that you have just recited, repeated after me on a daily basis, just as when you wake up, you should uh, recite it and then th uh, think through. And so in this way, also, you, when you, before you go to bed, you should do and uh, reflect on these uh, lines. And then as you pass your time, as uh, time passes, days, weeks, months, and so forth, I mean, you will see, and years and so forth, you'll see experience. Of course, you came here during this monsoon time. You have 
suffered maybe because of rain and cold weather and so forth. But uh, so when you go back, your friends who are in home there in your countries sh should be able to say that oh, this person has changed now for the better, having gone to Dharamsala. If they have to, if they say that I mean, um, that you have become a worse person, that's really a shame. Next, we will have four sessions for the Southeast Asian people. So because we have not much space, I'll remain seated on the throne. And then those who I mean, those of you who are going to take picture with me, uh, you should come in your groups, as you are already uh, d divided into groups. Manifesting in the core of aspirants, spiritual capacities, the wish to the source of all virtues. Page 21. To you, we offer you prayers with fervent devotion. Let then think that so, protector of the land of souls, live for, for a hundred years. Show on him your him blessings your so that his aspirations so are fulfilled without hindrance. Without hindrance. To the, the assembly of all meditational deities, deities manifesting as countless mandalas countless and divinities, mandalas, the and magical the clouds of the magical clouds of immaculate transcendent <coughs> wisdom, reaching to the furthest expanse of the space of ultimate reality. To you we offer prayers with fervent devotion. That dancing Gatso, protector of the land of snows, live for a hundred eons. Shower him your blessings so that his aspirations are fulfilled without hindrance. To all the rituals buddhas of the three times, endowed with ten powers and who are even masters of the gods, and whose attributes of perfection are the source of all compassionate deeds, benefiting the vast ocean night realm of sentient beings. To you we offer prayers with fervent devotion. That dancing Gatso, protector of the land of slows, live for a hundred years. Shower on him your blessings so that his aspirations are fulfilled without hindrance. To the assembly of sacred doctrine, embodied in the three vehicles, supremely surround, a gentle of enlightenment, stainless, and changing eternal good, and the glory of all virgins, which actually liberates beings from the suffering of the three worlds. To you, we offer prayers with fervent devotion, that dancing Gatso, protector of the land of slows, live for a hundred years. Shower on him your blessing, so that his aspirations are fulfilled without hindrance. To all members of the Anthony noble spiritual community, who never stray from the thoughtfully liberated Adamant city, who possesses the wisdom eye that directly sees the profound truth, and the highest value to destroy all maturation of psychic system. To you, we offer prayers with fervent devotion. That dancing Gatso, protector of the land of slows, live for a hundred years. Shower and him your blessings so that his aspirations are fulfilled without hindrance. To the assembly of Yon's genius, heavenly beings of the three worlds, who appear in the highest paradise, in the places, and in the ceremonial grounds, and who, through creative pay in the hundredfold experiences of bliss and emptiness, support practitioners in their meditation on the excellence path. To you, we offer prayers with fervent devotion. That dancing Gatso, protector of the land of slows, live for a hundred eons. Shower on him your blessings so that his aspirations are fulfilled without hindrance. To the ocean of potatoes and down with... 
the powerful guardians and upholders of the teaching, who were inseparably on their matted locks, the knot symbolizing their pledge to the Vajra holder. To you, we offer prayers with fervent devotion that Tenzin Gyatso, protector of the land of snows, live for a hundred aeons. Shower on him your blessings so that his aspirations are fulfilled without hindrance. Thus, to this congregation of excellent, undeceiving refuge, we pray that by the power of this prayer, expressed from a heart filled with devotion and humility, may the mighty speech and mind of the sole protector of the land of snow, the supreme Ngawang Losang Tenzin Gyatso, be indestructible, unfluctuating, and unceasing. May he live for a hundred aeons, seated on a diamond throne, transcending decay and destruction. You are the jewel heart, embodying all compassionate, beneficial deeds. O most courageous one, you carry on your shoulders the burden of all the Buddhas of the infinite realms. May all your noble aspirations be... Total wisdom versus of the middle way, and then homage to Gautama, who moved by his compassion towards Sagatama to read us of all distorted views. So today is the last day of our teaching this time. And uh, mainly we are going to do the bodhicitta ceremony As uh, I've said before, dharma is for, or religion or spirituality is for achieving happiness. So according to Buddhism, this uh, suffering is rooted in our mind, which is unruly mind, and then the happiness also um, should be rooted in our mind. And when we talk about living healthy, we take care of our physical health. And accordingly, we need to <clears throat> know how to keep healthy, hygienic, and so forth. And therefore, we need to know the factors which give us good health. And then similarly, it is the case with the mind. With, uh, with, because we have this human intelligence, human mind with this in special intelligence, we actually cause, uh, have a lot of thought processes going on which bring us happiness or unhappiness. And therefore, it is very important to know the working uh, or the system of mind itself. Animals, of course, may not have the same kind of power of thinking that we as humans have. And so it's a matter of whether we pay attention to this or not, that we can achieve our goal or not. And so to know the mind is very important. The, the health or hygiene of mind is very important. Hygiene of emotion. So with regards to Buddhism, <coughs> Ma, um, Maitreya Buddha has said that uh, the bodhicitta is the factor which averts our lower realms of existence, both in the lower realms of existence. <clears throat> so the rebirth into the lower realms of existence is the result of harming others, causing harm and uh, pain to others. And therefore, by restraining ourselves, and we create the causes for harm, higher rebirth, rebirth in the higher realms of existence. And therefore, by practicing bodhicitta, this altruistic spirit of enlightenment, by studying it and then on reflecting on it and then also integrating this principle within oneself. Of course, there is a level of practice where you think, oh, if I harm others, I would actually suffer. I would go into the lower realms of existence, and therefore you restrained um, those of the negative actions. Whereas in the practice of bodhisattvas, 
the reason that you use is not that you will go to uh, hell, but then because if you harm um, um, others, they are uh, pains. They, um, the, you, uh, is the uh, the yardstick of Mayana. and so forth in his ex uh, songs of experience. So when you think about bodhicitta, <clears throat> it is something that actually gives you a sense of wonder and amazement. If you really think seriously about it, of course, this happens. How good and that if I and have this kind of experience of bodhicitta and so forth. And therefore, you should first gain understanding of what bodhicitta is. And on a daily basis, give thought to it over and over again. And uh, the, from your ex own experience, you'll find that if you are, have a good heart, warm heart towards others, you will have good... Um, uh, health as well, and you will be you have peace of mind that in turn helps you to have good physical health as well. So we want we all want uh, friends, and with money or power and uh, uh, fame. I mean, it's, this is not going to uh, come in. So if you have a good heart, warm heart, then you will have good friends. If you disregard and, in fact, forget about others' well-being or welfare and, in fact, go on to exploit others, then how can you have good friends? So it's very important to have a good heart, warm heart. First, let's have tea. Create pain, give pain to others. And therefore, you restrain harming others because they, uh, you don't want to harm others more than thinking of uh, your or the consequences that you would face. And so the Bodhisattva's intention to restrain uh, the negative actions is um, because the sentient beings suffer. Whereas in the disciples' um, tradition, you, know, you avoid negative actions because you don't want to um, uh, be um, reborn into lower realms of existence. And also, they, uh, their focus is to overcome the negative, uh, the, um, those of the uh, disturbing uh, emotions uh, to reach nirvana, whereas bodhisattvas uh, their aim is to attain the highest goal of uh, Buddhahood for the benefit of all sentient beings. And so all the practices that are taught in the sutras, Mahayana sutras, are for uh, the practice of bodhicitta and uh, serving others. And so here again, uh, with regards to the practice of uh, the uh, bodhicitta, you actually use your wisdom, realizing the reality, the, the nature of things, and then this wisdom understanding reality and um, must help you to um, uh, develop love uh, loving kindness compassion and then that in turn brings up um, called, uh, in you um, uh, that of the extraordinary resolve to uh, take the responsibility of helping others out of suffering on your shoulder and then you develop bodhicitta and so um, this is how the, uh, the practice of bodhisattvas go, uh, you go about with the practice of bodhisattvas and uh, bodhisattva charya avatara in bodhisattva avatara the um, uh, Shandi Deva says. So, if, um, if you are not able to exchange your peace or joy and happiness with the suffering of others, leave alone attaining Buddhahood, enlightenment, uh, even in uh, Buddhahood, even in this cycle of existence, in existence, you will not have happiness. And uh, the, uh, because of our self-cherishing attitude, this extreme self-cherishing attitude, you are let into the lower realms of existence and all the different misfortunes um, 
the bad things that are unfortunate things that are happening to us in our um, human um, society and communities is because of this self-cherishing attitude. And therefore, bodhicitta, this altruistic spirit of enlightenment, and you need to, with regard to this, you need to think how this brings about the temporary as well as the ultimate lasting goal of happiness. Even an atheist who may criticize religion, and if they uh, actually develop and, and have a warm heart, they will have happiness. And therefore, it's very important. And uh, therefore, uh, the, uh, in Bodhisattva Chara Avatara, Shantideva says, the Buddhas, having pondered what is the uh, cause for um, uh, happiness, for the temporary and the lasting happiness for sentient beings, and having thought about that, they uh, actually found that bodhicitta is the factor. Um, they, they have seen or found that this bodhicitta is the factor for that goal. And so, Jerembuche also says bodhicitta.